there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, grab yourself a cup of tea, and stay with us for the next few minutes. I hope you saw Jody Matthews on the program yesterday because we are discussing <clears throat> her book, Revelation Simply Made. And simply put, <clears throat> pardon me, and if there was ever a time, my friend, to study Revelation, it is right now. You have, if you know anything about the Bible, about the end times, about the way God moves and works, um, we are certainly in that time frame and we don't know how long it will be, but there are things happening that have not happened before. And I think Jody, when I talked to her, I think she's got the whole book memorized, to be honest with you. And so I hope you saw her yesterday, but we'll pick up today because we're talking about the book of Revelation all this week. And so I just held her over and we made some extra interviews and she will be my guest this week. I think it's very, very timely. America is in a mess and that's all a prelude to the coming of the Lord. So I hope that um, you will enjoy her. To, I know you will if you saw her yesterday. And she was on the program about four years ago and we discussed the book at that time, but it's far more pertinent at this time. And I'm going to join... Stephanie, for the kind of dessert I like, something that's kind of soft and nice, not heavy. This is a frosty peach and cream yogurt pie. Need I say more? I think not. So I'll join her in just a second, but I want to remind you that we are viewer supported. And just this morning, I was going through a lot of records and I couldn't help but thank the Lord for you wonderful, wonderful people who send in to support this program I think you feel the way I feel that it's a very important program and we really need to put a spotlight on our homes. If you'd like to use your credit card, there's a number there for you, 800-229-0059. Or our address, if you still write checks, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you in advance for any amount. We appreciate it and love to give you a hug, but please accept our gratitude for it. Okay, we have an interesting pie. This is going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's a light, refreshing dessert. It's mm -hmm. not heavy chocolate with sauce mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just a light ladies' lunch dessert. And don't you know, you can use your own ingenuity on this if you don't care for this flavor. Yeah, if you don't like Take peaches, you could idea. do strawberry. You could do blueberry. Mm -hmm. There's so many different mm -hmm. types of yogurts and fruits mm -hmm. and that would be yummy. And you can tell by the um, ingredients, very, very light. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so we have already made graham cracker crust, because Aren't why? they wonderful? <laughs> God bless whoever did, you know, invented these. Okay, do you want to tell your secret while I put stuff well, in? Well, when, we <laughs> when I got here, Stephanie had about everything done. I said, look, I'll finish this up. I had to finish the pie because we were waiting for the Cool Whip or the Whip Topping, whatever, to thaw. get a little bit softer. And so I finished the pie, and I noticed when it was all finished and put in the freezer <laughs> that this was broken. This is what happens so when I leave. No, <laughs> We don't know where that part is. It's in the pie. It's so we're trying to make a contest. Like whoever finds it gets a yeah. prize. That's the only place it could be. I've looked. <laughs> so we'll see. But, yeah, that's what happens. I leave Arthleen to yeah. her own. You leave me just for a few right, moments. For five minutes. By myself. She breaks the spatula okay, and okay so your... that's three peach yogurts mm -hmm. and a tablespoon of powdered sugar which mm -hmm. i don't know why you would need to add more sweetness but either. we will mm -hmm. and then i took a can of peaches and I, this is a half of the can mm -hmm. and i just chopped them up and then we have a thing of whipped topping we're going to mix it all together and put it in the pie crust and put it in the freezer. I mean, and, it's that um, simple. If it's in season, why couldn't we put some fresh peaches? You can, in? for yeah. sure. That would be that so would be delicious. Up. Anything that's in season that mm -hmm. you have the, the flavored mm -hmm. that flavor yogurt for, do that. Mm -hmm. Anything in season is going to be so much better. But this better. whole idea of something so soft and lightweight after you've had a big meal is yes. just a perfect. Just refreshing. Look at Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yum. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can keep this spatula together. I've yeah. never seen a spatula break like that no. before, so I'm not sure what you were doing with it this morning. No, no. one was in here. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> Looks like you're beating somebody with it. was feeling very it. violent. <laughs> <laughs> Were you taking out your aggression on the poor peach yeah, center? Yeah, I think so. So this just goes in. You put it Look in the freezer. It once, it, once it starts freezing, you can put plastic wrap over it. Mm -hmm. And then before you serve it, put it in the refrigerator for a little while. But would you like to get you want that? It to, you want it to freeze. You do want it to freeze. And then you want it to thaw a little just bit. Just a little bit. Just so you get kind yeah. of schizophrenic. Yeah. That looks so mm -hmm. delicious. I'm waiting to see if it comes, that the part of the spatula comes out with like the very first piece. <laughs> well, well, let's promise our audience that if we don't find it right now, we will on a Future program we will let update you, know. you. Yes, who you found know. the special prize? Mm -hmm. I could just take this right up here to my I desk. I have to and confess that I did taste taste this one. So got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, this you could just put in a bowl, right? <laughs> yeah. This. Uh, oh, that thought a little probably it's too a little much. Bit large. Oh. <laughs> Do y'all see that? <laughs> You want some we of that? We are a hot mess today. Oh, everything. There you go. Yeah. Okay. 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 Here, I'm going to take a little taste. Because <laughs> you said you tasted it already, right? Oh, Let's see. man. It's... Spatula? Mm -hmm. Nope, no spatula. No. Okay. But um, we mm. we owe it to our audience. Oh! No. <laughs> are you kidding oh. me? <laughs> you that was not planned that was not planned. i promise you i didn't feel anything when i was oh my okay. gosh you suppose we can put it i win nothing no <laughs> could we put it back together and use it maybe no oh this has Come been a on. disaster <laughs> if you really want this you recipe do. it's delicious i promise yeah yeah it is very very good with this. coming up on your screen <laughs> Uh, I'm. I don't know whether to cry or laugh or what. So. Listen, if we have a jolly reel this year, I this just it. made it onto it. Yes, you did. <laughs> Boy, that was one in a hundred, I think. Okay, um, information's coming up. You can get this recipe. I know you want it. It's Absolutely good. free, and choose the way you want it. And after that, uh, you'll hear the conversation I had with Jody Matthews, and you're gonna love it. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Jody, on the last program, I... You, you poured out so much information. I was just sitting here. I thought, I can hear my viewers asking questions yeah. uh, because they feel like you've got the answers. Oh, and wow. I do too, but um, maybe we have new viewers today. Yes. And uh, this is Jody Matthews, and she um, is, I would say, quite an expert on the book of Revelation. But I was wondering, oh. what ever got you so interested? in this book. I think if the Lord called me to write a book <laughs> in the Psalms. <laughs> well, when you want to know what's going to happen ahead. So if something is always scaring you or tormenting you, you know, it's not that the book tormented me, but when it was preached, um, it would never, it was always preached with this doom gloom or ha, ah, you're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. And when I read the scriptures for myself Good and, idea. I, and I read, you know, comfort was attached to raptor, rapture. I'm like, wait a minute. So did God save me to destroy me? Live in fear. That's oxymoronic right there. Did God save me uh, to, to just say, uh, uh, now you're going to lose your salvation? Well, why are we sending all these people out and, <laughs> and, and then next week we're going to tell them, you know, you're going to lose yours next Friday if you do something bad. And, you know, so you have to stop and begin to read the word for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I now begin to go for the conviction that God has now convicted me on, and I follow that purpose. And each year, I take the time to read Revelation once a year, and I feel like I get even more pulling of the veil back. And he's like, 
here it is. Here's some more information. And guess what? In the midst of COVID, when it all hit, I already knew that it was not mm -hmm. the pale horse. And I'll tell you, I already knew it wasn't the end because God already showed us how it's going to end. And so I said, okay, Revelation talks about this. And I said, God says, make it simple for him. Mm -hmm. So when God wants to get something out, he just puts his hand on you. And if you obey, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, to be humble enough to walk in his grace, uh, his presence. And he will give me the ideas and I can put it together to make it simply put. And uh, it's illustrated. Colorful pictures. Uh-huh. Also, I'd like to let you know, you can tell it. I don't have to let you know, but she's a great speaker. And she does speak in churches and for women's groups and things. And she would bless your people and inspire them. And Jody, I've been in the ministry all my life. I know it inside and out, backwards and forwards. And I truly believe in churches bringing outside ministries in. Oh, for sure. What a blessing. I've got a Christian psychologist that comes on every month. And I, wow. I tell the pastors, what a blessing if you had a marriage seminar Friday and Saturday with this man wow. and um, your men's groups and your women's groups. And there's so many different subjects and topics. And a pastor can't be an expert on everything. That's why I remember my dad used to bring in prophetic evangelists. Yes. And he, they'd have a chart. And they pointed to Revelation and all. Well, look They're at specialized this. ministries. There are, you, it, it, come on, that's throughout the Bible. That's very much biblical to those who say everything has to be in the Word. So, okay, because <laughs> I, I love the saints. You know, I've been one all my life. So I know that if you don't have it in the Word. So look, was not the 12 tribes of Israel. All of them had designated Different. special abilities. Mm -hmm. And so we know the kings derived from Judah, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the sons of Issachar, were the ones who were very prophetic in times. Yes, they were. And so they, they were like, the and times. so they understood the times. And what you were supposed to do is not so that you can be this glorified person, though. Christ said, okay, so now I have anointed you to do this. Now you go and tell the other tribes about what's going on. Yeah. Now is the time to move. Now is the time to do mm -hmm. this. And that's why Moses had his mm -hmm. 70 elders, and each one of them operated in their gift. And what does it does it do? It enhances the body of Christ. Absolutely. It makes everybody yeah. better. And so, yeah, I am. I, I, I look. I had to come to the realization. Am I one of the ones who get a chance to be <laughs> to talk about prophecy? Oh my goodness! And when I found out how easy it is, when I found out that prophecy is comforting, as Dr. Ed Heinsohn stated, uh, prophecy is written not to scare us, right. but to prepare us. You know, Perfect. or and mm -hmm. to inform us. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, guys, you miss we're missing out on your your whole information. And that's why you're here. And <laughs> we will have her website up. You can reach her through that also. Yes. You can get the book through through the website. Now can they get it on Amazon and all oh, those things? Amazon places? and everything. Go right on Amazon and and, and, and uh, go ahead and leave a review to mm -hmm. let them know like wow this book is helping me mm -hmm. because it is for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, jump on my website, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, wherever books are sold. And the name of the book is Revelation Simply Put and I highly recommend it. We did a um, I think almost a whole week on this uh, about four years ago. And we're doing it again. I want to have Jody back, but also I thought so much has happened. Yes. And we're sitting right in the middle of what all has happened. And um, it's whether you can just say, okay, this, this is it. This is what Revelation says about this. No, just the whole atmosphere the, around the world. It, it is kind of groaning. And the Bible says that it it's is. going to. Yes. That's uh, the book of Romans. It mm -hmm. says the world is groaning. And who is it groaning for? The revelation of Christ. Jesus, yeah. We need Jesus to appear. We need Jesus mm -hmm. to save. And guess what? Mm -hmm. When he comes, he's not coming to destroy us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he's coming to save. Jesus said to tell you the truth, if I didn't come back, man will destroy himself. Yes with all the wars, everybody fights for power. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, if I didn't come back, uh, no, no mm -hmm. flesh would be left alive. Now, uh, we, can, we can all be shocked and we can all be suckers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> believe anything that somebody puts in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, so on the last program, we talked a little bit about COVID and I don't want to get into that again, except maybe some people are thinking about vaccinations coming in that 
with it comes the mark of the beast in your body. Have you heard that one? I've heard that one. <laughs> it's amazing because when COVID hit, I started getting so many emails. People were texting, hey, Jody, isn't this the end? So this is really good. Let's deal with that, that small bit. Guess what? Did y'all not know that God already answers that in Revelation 2? So is COVID, this vaccine that everybody's trying to get, yeah. is supposed to help keep us better? Is this the mark of the beast? Well, Revelation chapter 13, Didn't verses 16 through 18. <laughs> I know, look at this though. It says, and he causes all, which Revelation chapter 13 is a, that whole chapter was dedicated to the Antichrist where God says, let's pull back and I'm gonna show you everything that he's gonna do. God is just telling all his business. Mm -hmm. But look at this. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, understand it, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark. The word there, mark, is sharagma, which means to etch in stone. So God says, the mark of the beast, he already told us what it is, and he told us how it's gonna look. To everybody who's out here, I'm trying to get rid of myths and debunk these myths. Yes. The, the, the uh, mark of the beast is the internet. The mark of the beast is gonna be a vaccine. God says, it's not gonna be a vaccine shot in your arm. <laughs> he says, it's going to be a visible mark, which will be etched, all right, sharagma. It means to scratch or to etch. Take the Bible, at his word, take God at his word. God says, I'm gonna reveal to you that it will come in the form of where it must be seen in your hand or in your forehead. Uh, vaccine folks cannot be seen <laughs> in your hand or your forehead. Now, the because the Antichrist will be a master mathematician. That's what, that, this is what, why he will get into buying and selling with his mark. And then God went as far as to tell us, and the mark of his name, because the Jews are very keen with this, Jews and even Greek letters, the, num the letters are also numbers. The mark of his name, God says, 666, that is found on page 51 in my Bible. And look, isn't that amazing? Everybody's trying to figure out what the mark <laughs> of the beast is. If you would open up Revelation, God says the number that's going to be inched in your hand is six. Six, six. That way you'll be able to find. God revealed it. And so it, it, it bothers me when we have people, oh, it's going to be a vaccine. So if you want to go ahead and listen to a celebrity rather than the word of God, you're going to be off on goo mm -hmm. goonie tales. I even put in here, mm -hmm. Second Peter, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. But ye were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So Paul says 5G is not going to be the Antichrist. <laughs> when we get to 6G, it's going to be a black hole. When we go up to 8G, we'll all be able to teleport. People of God. Not at all it. God says it's very simple. You want to know what the mark of the beast is? It's found in mm -hmm. Revelation chapter mm -hmm. 13. And then God even tell you all the numbers. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Because it's always the Antichrist will do the flip side of what God does. Here mm -hmm. it is. There is also a verse in the Bible that says every Christian, every believer in Christ is sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Guess where we're sealed at? Now, we can't see this spiritually, but we are sealed mm -hmm. in our foreheads. And mm -hmm. in our hand, and so the beast, the antichrist, he always wants to do the flip side mm -hmm. of what God is doing. So he's going to come. He's he's a copycat. Mm -hmm. That's why I said this is so simple, folks. And God even told us the number. They're going to bring your right hand to your forehead. That's right. But so you like it, a tattoo. So. You know what? That's why I say etched in stone. And you know, tattoos are very popular. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put it by anyone that it would be that it would be a tattoo. Type. But the Bible specifically lets us know it will be etched or scratched in. Mm -hmm. So, is a vaccine scratched in, folks? Do you get vaccine? Even if you got a, a vaccine in your head, no, no, you don't get uh, the needle in your hand. You don't get the needle in your forehead. So, people of God. Revelation or the apocalypse or the covers have been taken off that COVID vaccine that they're trying to scramble for and all of that. Yeah. You know, if you take vaccine or not, if you, that is not the mark of the beast. Okay. Simply put. <laughs> <laughs> Took care of that one. Um, okay. Um, quickly on this one. Yeah. Is some of the information in Revelation only for Israel? Let me share something with you about that. I, I I put this at the beginning of the book so that you can know how to understand prophecy. Mm -hmm. Two major things that is key to prophecy. You have to understand the relationship between Israel and the church. Um, 
we and the two will dovetail into one another at the end. But Israel as a nation, uh, their specific is not only for Israel. Revelation tell us who it is addressed to if you read chapter one and not get into the Antichrist, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's in chapter six. But Revelation chapter one, I explain that very well. Uh, it tells us it is for anyone who is a saint. There are Messianic Jews who also fit in with us, the church, mm -hmm. but they are also a part of Israel. Israel oh, yeah. do well, national things. Yeah. Actually, we just celebrated, well, not celebrated, but they did one of the holiest days of the year. It is called Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. That just went, we, and they just did the 10 days of all. Earlier the Jews week, are all, yeah. right. So Revelation is not only for the Jew, our Jewish brethren, okay? Mm -hmm. No, it is for all those who believe, but does it include relevant information about Israel Oh, yes, as yes. well as it does about the church, because the church is in Christ. Israel married to God, God's wife. He makes that very clear, that nation. That's why no one is to touch that nation. That's why the church will never replace so Israel. <laughs> That's right. And look, I'm going to let God and Israel handle that. <laughs> Work it out. But the church, which is made up of both Jews and Gentiles, all the other nations, because you have Jews who believe in Christ. Absolutely. Jews were the first Christians. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, how you think it got propagated. It really did start in Israel with mm -hmm. Jews, but we are in who? Christ. And Christ. we're often known as the bride of Christ. So that's amazing. So you have mm -hmm. God's wife and you have Christ's wife. And so the two are spoken about in Revelation, but it's going to be geared more toward the nation. But if you get my book, I do a full chapter. Mm -hmm. I fit in the missing piece of where mm -hmm. Israel fit in here and where the church fits in. And if you just joined us, name of the book is Revelation. Simply put, uh, yes. we have a website up. And uh, you can get the book through that or some of the other stories we mentioned earlier. Okay, here's one. Could, could we understand Revelation at all without technology? And the reason I ask that, uh, the, the two who were going to be slain, I believe in the streets of Jerusalem, and they said that all the world would see it. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that verse was held up to ridicule. Because how would they see it? And then a satellite went up there. I remember <laughs> that. And when that satellite began to work, we knew the whole world could see those two dead people right there in Jerusalem. For sure. Revelation chapter 11, when the two witnesses come back. And mind you, at this time, in my book, uh, I put a timeline in the back because Revelation runs in chronological order, which is which is magnificent of how God put this book mm -hmm. together. But Revelation chapter 11, now you see... What your cell phones have to do, we all are taking a part in history. <laughs> Forget the, the satellite, yeah. great, but we can go, have it right Man. in our hands. And look, you can go live with your cell phone. That's how people are going to be. And, the, and that's what Revelation talks about, the streets of Jerusalem. It lets you know now all your attention is going to be turned over there. And God will give power unto the Gentiles. Why the Gentiles? Because the Antichrist will be over there, too over there near the temple, Revelation chapter 11. And so people say, well, what do my cell phone has to do with this? <laughs> All the people who are left because the church would have already been gone. This is happening during the seven year tribulation period, split up into two halves of three and a half years, three and a half years, 1260 days. That's why you see that number all throughout the book of Daniel and you see that number all throughout the book of Revelation. Uh, 1260 days. Revelation chapter 11, yes, the Antichrist will kill the two witnesses who will come down, and when he kills them, the Bible said the whole world will see it. How? Everybody gonna have their <laughs> cell phones? So look at this. It lets you know that we're set up. We are set up for the, the coming of, of Christ and for the end time. We didn't have cell phones like this 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is also explained in, in my book, Revelation, simply put, that as prophecy gets closer, it's almost like you're coming upon a mountain, and when you get up upon the mountain far away, you say, oh, it's just one mountain. But as you get closer, it's two, it's three, and you start to see more. Now that we are seeing more, this is God graciously himself to say, okay, my people of God, including the church and the world. God speaks to two people, the church and the world. Get yourselves together and get your house in order. Well, but he's coming, coming back to save us, not to hurt us, to save us. But there are some things that's going to go on for the world to those who do not believe. That's and why he, there's the importance of he salvation. He graciously let us know. However, that makes me look at technology totally different. It does, doesn't it? That um, 
it could happen, I guess, without technology, but we couldn't. We wouldn't know what's going on. We wouldn't know what's going on. And you know why God wants technology? Here's the comforting thing. Because you are supposed to use technology and mm -hmm. preach Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But most people use technology and preach themselves. And so this is all that we see is ourselves. That's why in the end times, because there are many apoc little apocalyptic books throughout the Bible. And that's why in the book of Timothy, uh, Paul tells us men are going to become lovers of themselves. And, and no instead kidding. of using technology to say, Christ can save you today. That's why I, I, I oppose when people say, I love technology, it's friend and foe, but my thing is, what are you using it for? And so are you mm -hmm. preaching Christ? And I kudos to all the churches who are online, mm -hmm. preaching Christ, look, during COVID, y'all jumped yes. online, and Christ is saying, why? So, for some reason, he needs to continue to get his name out, and, and it I'm, comes through the power of technology. I believe a lot of people were saved online I do too. during the COVID thing. I do too. And you know what, we're out of time. <sighs> I can't believe this. We're having but fun. She'll be back on the next program. <laughs> Yay. So uh, you stay with me. Have a couple things to say before we say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Oh, I hope you're loving this as much as I am, because I, I remember when I was younger, and, you know, a prophecy teacher would come through with uh, some teaching on the book of Revelation. He'd have a chart, and he'd point to it and all, and I was like, what is this all about? But we are living it now. And with the technology and everything, uh, it's right there. We know exactly what's going on. The important thing, my friend, is to be ready. Be ready to meet Jesus. Things are just happening now. The rapture could take place at any moment at all. God has not left us ignorant about end times at all. And I'm thankful for somebody like uh, Jody who can come and explain it to us. And she's teaching me a lot. So don't forget, she'll be on the next three programs. And uh, we will keep this very, very interesting topic going. But I think that really the message is let's live in expectancy that he's coming back. Live in such a way that we'll be absolutely ready when he comes. And you join me next time. Remembering no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.